Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Noman Meman, and I am here at the Ghazi Usman Pasha Hospital for my uh, wrist arthroscopy and microsurgery fellowship. Today, I am going to present a topic of carpal, uh, carpal instability. And my topic will include the perilunate dislocations and lunate dislocations, scapholunate dissociation, lunotriquintral dissociation, and alno carpal disassociation. Uh, these are the normal x-rays of the wrist. The wrist is composed of two rows of bone that provide motion and transfer forces. In the first row, as you can appreciate, the uh, bones include esophoid, lunate, uh, triquintrum, and uh, pisiform. And in the second uh, row, you can appreciate uh, uh, there is a trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and hook of hamate. These are the uh, uh, lateral radiographs of uh, uh, the wrist joint. And uh, as you can appreciate, uh, the, uh, uh, all of the bones and uh, the relationship to the, each other. These are the Gulilla arcs. Uh, these arcs are uh, basically the concept of this arc is to understand the normal anatomy and restoration of the anatomy of the wrist. If these arcs are intact, then uh, you, must, uh, uh, you must think that the X-rays of the wrist are normal. And if these arcs are disrupted, so that means there is some disassociation or there is some uh, problem in the wrist joint. So uh, these are the normal anat anatomic relationship one should keep in mind before uh, reading the radiographs uh, of the wrist joint. Uh, the radial inclination should be 23 degree. The radial length should be 11 millimeter. The volar tilt should be 12 degree. Capitolunate angle should be zero degree. Carpal height ratio should be 0.53. Escapolunate angle should be 47 degree. And uh, a lunate is the key to carpal stability, and it is one of the most important uh, bone in the wrist joint. So these are the X-rays. As you can appreciate on the left side, there is a, a, a carpal height ratio. And on the right side, you can see that there is a scapolunate angle. So uh, these are the scapholunate angles and the concept of uh, D psi and V psi. The normal scapholunate angle, it is uh, 32. It is between 30 to 60 degree. If it is more than 80 degrees, so then the pathology is desired. We will discuss it later on in our slides. But for, uh, uh, for just an overview, I am describing here that if the scapholunate angle is greater than 80 degree, then it is a desired. And if it is less than 30 degree, then it is a beside uh, deformity of the wrist. Uh, wrist ligaments are also important to discuss. And uh, there are two sets of uh, ligaments present, intrinsic and extrinsic. So uh, extrinsic ligaments connect radius to carpus and carpus to better carpal bones. And uh, intrinsic ligaments connect carpal to carpal bones. These are the wrist ligaments, and uh, uh, this picture shows the wrist ligaments. And I must uh, tell you that the three ligament out of all of the ligaments are very important. The number one is the, is the short radio uh, lunate ligament. The second is the radio escapo capitate ligament, and the third is the long radio lunate ligament. These three ligaments are very important for the stability of the wrist joint. This is another uh, other illustration showing the extensive ligament from the palmar and dor uh, dorsal aspect. Again, the three ligaments are very important. So uh, now Desai. Desai is dorsal intercalated segmental instability. When the scaphoid is destabilized by fracture or scapholunar ligament disruption, the lunate and triquitrum assume a position of excessive dorsiflexion. So this is known as the dorsal intercalated segmental instability. And the scapholunate angle becomes abnormally high. So in this eye, there is a, a disruption of the scapholunate ligament and the scapholunate ligament uh, angle becomes abnormally high. And the opposite of uh, the desire is uh, the volar intercalated uh, segmental instability. When the triquintrum is destabilized, usually by the disruption of the lunar triquintral ligament, the opposite pattern uh, is seen as the lunate volarly flexes. And in this case, the uh, angle becomes uh, shorter, is less than 30 degrees. So most of the time, the mechanism of injury is the same axial compressive forces, wrist hyperextension under deviation, and intercarpal, intercarpal supination. <clears throat> 
Now we discuss the perilunate and lunate dislocations. There are two categories, perilunate and lunate. And uh, uh, in the perilunate, the difference between is that the lunate stays in position while the carpus dislocates in the perilunate variety. And in lunate dislocation, lunate is forced volar or dorsal while carpus remains aligned with the radius. Perilunate is further divided into four types, but most of the common type is transescaphoid perilunate type. As you can appreciate in the illustration, uh, in the type A, the lunate is forced uh, uh, volarly and the rest of the carpus are in alignment with the radius. And the B, you can see that the lunate is in alignment with the radius and the rest of the carpus uh, dislocated dorsally. So this is the concept of the perilunate and lunate dislocations. As you can also appreciate on the x-ray, uh, uh, the left side is a lunate dislocation and the right side is a perilunate dislocation. So the pathoanatomy or the sequence of events is uh, uh, described by Mayfield. Uh, the first uh, ligament that is to be disturbed is the uh, scapholunate ligament, followed by the disruption of the capitolunate uh, articulation. After that, disruption of the lunotrochanteral articulation, failure of dorsal radiocarpal ligaments, and lunate rotates and dislocates usually into the carpal tunnel. So this is the uh, sequence of events of the lunate dislocation described by Mayfield. Now we will uh, shortly discuss uh, the rotatory subluxation of the scaphoid, uh, which is also an important topic. Injuries to the dorsal and volar portion of the uh, scapholunate interosseous ligament, proximal pole of the scaphoid to rotate dorsally. So rotatory subluxation of the scaphoid may manifest into four types. Uh, the number one is the dynamic, the number two is a static, three is with degenerative arthritis and four with uh, secondary to a condition known as Keenbox disease. Keenbox osteochondrosis or Keenbox disease. And uh, chronic uh, scapholunar deficiency is uh, also known as, uh, as we have already discussed, the dorsal intercalatory uh, segmental instability, uh, scaphoid flexus palmar, and the lunate dorsal flexus if untreated. And if we left it untreated, so it will progress into the scapholunate advanced collapse. So examination, there are various uh, and multiple tests uh, present for uh, examination of the carpal instability. But one of the uh, most common uh, tests and easy test is the scaphoid test in which the examiner places four fingers on the dorsum of the radius with the thumb on the scaphoid fibrosity using the right hand for the right wrist and the left hand for the left wrist. Ulnar deviation of the wrist aligns the scaphoid with the long axis of the forearm, applying thumb pressure to the scaphoid fibrosity. The wrist is turned to radial deviation, maintaining the thumb pressure on the scaphoid tuberosity. If the scaphoid is sufficiently unstable, the proximal pole is driven dorsally and the pain results. This is uh, another test uh, which is known as uh, catch and uh, catch up clung. It is also uh, a common test, but a single or a double test is sufficient for your diagnosis. Imaging. Apart from the uh, traditional x-rays or standard x-rays, AP and lateral views, uh, additional radial and ulnar deviation views and clenched fist view uh, is required. The findings on the uh, radiographs uh, commonly that a uh, person can see is a scapholunate gap or gap of greater than three millimeter. That is also known as the Terry Thomas sign and uh, cortical ring sign that is caused by scaphoid malalignment and scaphoid shortening. Uh, but one should keep in mind that these are the findings you can uh, see on the x-rays in the very late stages of the disease. In the early stages of the disease, apart from the x-ray, you need to confirm your uh, diagnosis with the help of an MR or CT scan because these are the signs they present very lately and at that time, most of the scaphoid and lunate, they have undergone into degenerative changes. So it's better uh, to confirm your X-ray findings if, it is ex if your X-rays are normal, despite your clinical examination suggesting of a scaphalodont instability. So you should go for an MR or a CT scan to confirm your diagnosis at early stages of the disease. The lateral radiographs also, uh, as, you, uh, as we have uh, already discussed, the dorsal tit of lunate leads to SL angle of greater than 30 degree and capital lunate angle of greater than 20 degree. 
so these are the findings normally uh, you can calculate on the x rays now a scapulonar dissociation uh, this is a teresoma sign on the ap view so we will now discuss some treatment options uh, some conventional treatment options and uh, some recent advances in the carpo, uh, carpal instability so the conventional treatment includes uh, the close treatment of acute rotatory stabilization of the scaphoid consists of attempting reduction by placing the wrist in neutral flexion and a few degrees of ulnar deviation arthroscopic reduction and percutaneous pin fixation is one of another option if both of uh, them are not successful then you can go for an open reduction and uh, or if, if the injury is very old rotatory stabilization of the scaphoid may require construction of the scapulonar interosseous ligament with the segment of the extensor carpi radialis brevis tendon plus k wire fixation so choice of operative treatments are uh, obviously uh, scapulonar ligament repair acute scapulonar ligament injury without carpal malalignment if uh, there is a uh, if uh, scapulonar ligament is not amenable to repair you can go for a uh, reconstruction options and uh, scaphoid orif versus close reduction in percutaneous spinning sl uh, ligament injury is with a scaphoid fracture stabilization with wrist fusion rigid and unreducible deformities need wrist fusion so uh, this is a case of an uh, anterior dislocation of the lunate most common carpal dislocation is anterior dislocation of the lunate and anteriorly dislocated lunate can cause acute compression of the median nerve so uh, radiograph as you can see uh, this is a normal ap radiograph of the wrist so uh, the findings of the radiographs are the break in the uh, glula arc lunate and capitate are overlapping and lunate appears triangular pi of a uh, piece of pi sign is also uh, suggestive of the lunate dislocation and uh, on the lateral uh, radiographs you will appreciate loss of collinearity of radius lunate and capitate and the sl angle will increase in greater than 70 degree uh, in the acute and lunate dislocations mri are usually not required for diagnosis so the treatment of lunate dislocation is uh, closed reduction Uh, if it is less than three weeks and open release, if it is greater than three weeks, when the lunate cannot be reduced by open reduction, a reconstructive procedure such as proximal row carpectomy or arthrodesis may be necessary. So uh, we can see the close reduction uh, technique of uh, uh, different techniques have written in the textbooks. Uh, so we will discuss some of few. uh some of them a close reduction technique of tavernier uh finger traps elbow at 90 degree of flexion hand uh, 5 to 10 pound traction for 15 minutes dorsal dislocation are reduced through wrist extension traction and flexion of wrist and after reduction you have to apply sugar tom splint so uh, these were the conventional close reduction techniques of the uh, lunate dislocations Other instabilities are very less common, but we need uh, to discuss some of them in a, a brief overview. Uh, Palmer trans scaphoid perilunar dislocations extremely rare, and uh, dorsal trans uh, scaphoid perilunar dislocation similar to the isolated scaphoid fracture. It can be associated with other injuries of the upper extremity. Uh, close manipulation sometimes is sufficient. Open reduction, internal fixation, and when indicating board grafting may be necessary. this is uh, uh, one of the other uh, type of instability which is very rare i'll skip some of the slide uh, some of the slides for uh, uh, to cover my presentation in a given time treatment option for wrist ligament injuries and instabilities uh, uh, as we have discussed the different instabilities uh, previously uh so obviously arthroscopically is one of the best option and uh, but if someone is not aware of that so open repair or reconstruction of ligament is uh, is also an option instability problems in no significant arthrosis ligament if there is an instability and which no with no arthrosis 
तो ऑब्वियसली यू हैव टू गो फॉर लिगामेंट रिकंस्ट्रक्शन कैप्सुलर इम्प्रिकेशन एंड लिमिटेड इंटर कार्पल आर्थ्रोडिस and if it is the deformity is fixed and there is arthrosis so excisional arthroplasty like a proximal row carpectomy or limited intercarpal arthrodesis is one of the option uh ligament reconstruction ligament reconstruction uh, construction be reserved for patient whose ligament rupture cannot be maintained with the close reduction or patient who have their diagnosis made after about one month and uh, ligament reconstruction is not indicated in patients with associated degenerative joint diseases for whom other procedures such as radial sclerectomy wrist arthrodesis or wrist arthroplasty should be considered so uh, i will discuss one of the case of uh, carpal instability uh, uh, which we have uh, done here at gazi usman pasha hastane se hastane and uh, uh, this is a patient of a, a young male this is an x ray of a young male patient uh, as you can appreciate on the ap views uh, that there is a disassociation of the uh, uh, scapulonate and uh, you can appreciate the terithomus sign onto the ap views of the x ray so we plan for an uh, arthroscopic uh, procedure and as you can appreciate on the arthroscopic video that there was a dissociation uh, disassociation between so in this video as you can appreciate there is a rocking chair sign of the lunate that shows that there is a dissociation of the uh, scapulonate ligament as well as the lino trigeminal ligament and in the previous video i have shown you uh, uh, that there was a, a gap between the scapho lunate area uh, so we did uh, uh, arthroscopical uh, reduction of the scaphoid and uh, lunate and we passed the tight rope uh, from scaphoid up to the triquitrum and uh, we tightened reduced the uh, closed the gap between the um, scaphoid and lunate and after that we did a uh, dorsal capsulodesis arthroscopically uh, in order to achieve the biological uh, healing and after the operation we keep the patient for 4 uh, weeks in the cast and uh, these are the post operative x rays as you can appreciate that the uh, gap between the scaphoid and lunate uh, is closed and uh, is closed and post operatively we keep the patient in cast for 4 to 6 weeks and after that we will start mobilization achieving uh, the biological healing with the dorsal capsulodesis uh thank you thank you very much for listening me i hope you enjoyed the presentation and uh, i would like to thank uh, dr ismail bulen and dr barkan marsa for giving me opportunity to present this uh, topic and uh, Thank you very much.